with your classic FM, AKA with the DX7, it's the relationship between your carriers and modulators that makes all the difference. With a digital instrument like FM8, where you have a lot more options, that's not necessarily the case. And so this video, we're gonna talk about using the FM8 to make more of like a super saw type sound, just to show you the flexibility of this instrument and how you're not just limited to what maybe you would have had in the past. So speaking of carriers and modulators, if I go in here and I turn on two more of these operators and I bring the signal out like so, what we have here is still just our one fundamental sine wave, but what we really have are just three carriers. There are no modulators. No FM is being utilized at all. But on the flip side, if I go in here and I use E and D and I take E and I modulate F, so this now becomes the modulator. F is the carrier. And as I bring up the depth, we start to see more of those harmonics come in. And then if I want to get really crazy, we're going now like multiple layers and levels of modulation, like second order modulation. I could take D and I could have D modulate E. And so that is going to still impact F in a pretty big way because now you have like one frequency modulated operator, frequency modulating your carrier operator. So we'll just listen to that. It's easier to see than it is to just like talk about. <laughs> So depending on how everything is set up here in your matrix, you can get a really wide range of sounds. And remember that everything here is still using that exact same ratio. So if I go into D and I change this to two, or let's go to four, we'll hear a much bigger impact here on the sound, especially in those upper partials. Get sort of this really digital, grimy kind of a sound. And then when we start to go in and add envelopes, or you can even add an LFO to control this, uh, not that that's really necessary since we have the built-in LFO in the envelope, you can imagine some pretty wild and crazy sounds you can get. But there's a reason why in the DX7, you really had to utilize a lot of frequency modulation. And, and it's for two reasons, really. One is you only had sine waves that you could choose. And two is there really wasn't a filter. So it was the FM that was getting you the extra partials. And it's also what's taking it away when you combine it with an envelope. But here in this instrument, we see if we go into operator Z, this really isn't an operator at all. It's a filter module. All right. And you can see the filter curve like so. So this is very different. This is not like classic FM. And it's one of the reasons why we can really kind of use and abuse this a little bit further and come up with, um, you know, more unique timbres than say, just trying to emulate real world uh, acoustic sounds. So I right click to turn it on. I output that at 100%. We're not gonna hear anything right now, but I could take operator F, bring that into Z. And we can hear that like so. Now inside of Z, we have this filter curve and there's a cutoff. I want to get this to just be a low pass filter. What I'm going to do, and you can actually still see how the harmonics are changing. I'm only going to use number one here. I'm going to take the resonance all the way down and I'll bring the cutoff all the way up. So now we're just left with our sine wave here. And I can take this further again, because in this instrument, we have more than just a sine wave to choose from very rare. And when you start to then, you know, use some of these other unique shapes and combine that with FM, it can really take your sounds in a whole different direction. But I can go in here and choose like the sawtooth, for example. Now, this isn't going to be a super buzzy sawtooth. This is about the maximum you can go with like the FM process before you start getting a lot of the artifacts. So this is kind of like just the start to a sawtooth. You can still see how there's a curve as compared to it being sharp. And we can hear that. Go up one octave. Sounds like a very dull uh, sine wave, or excuse me, uh, sawtooth wave. And that really has nothing to do with this filter. This filter is not really doing anything at this point. It's not cutting off any of the upper partials. So you don't have to worry about that. But what we can do is we can go in and use some of these other operators and, you know, use our ratios and so forth to get a bit of a brighter, more aggressive uh, timbre here. So I can just go, I can turn all of these on. I'm going to go into uh, F and I'm going to change that to be a sawtooth. I'm going to bring some of that signal in. Let's bring this up to two. Maybe offset it slightly. 
Go into D, kind of do the same thing. We'll put this at two again. Change this to a saw. Maybe go up to C and change this to four. And we'll use B and we'll take that up to four as well. We'll offset those in different directions. So we'll offset this one going down. We'll offset this one going up. And we'll go in and change both of these waveforms to be sawtooth. And we'll go sawtooth again. And now when we listen. We have a pretty rich and a dense texture there. And if I wanted to go really crazy, I could take like B and maybe have that do a little bit of FM on F here. Well, maybe we'll try D because that ratio isn't as extreme. It's two as compared to four. A little bit better. And I'm okay with a pretty dense sound at this point because I'm going to be using that filter eventually. So I really am trying to stack it up. This might really be the best I can do. Yeah. I was kind of trying things and hearing the relationship, and this is going to be fine. So just a little bit of FM is being brought into play here. I didn't try modulating B by itself. That's not going to work. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. So you can see that we have mostly carrier signals and then a couple of modulators, and then we're always running it through the filter, which we can shape um, and use an envelope for. But before I do that, I'm gonna go back into my envelope section for my main operators here, and I'm gonna choose B through F, and I'm going to link those together. So B, C, D, E, and F. And what this is going to do is it's going to make all of them respond and act in the same way. So if I add in like release, you can see how they all get that release. And so if we're making a sound like. We're pretty much good to go there. And now I'm actually even going to increase this longer because I'm going to shape the filter a little bit differently. That's good. I can go in here and I can increase the envelope amount. Then I'll go and bring down the cutoff. Cool. We'll do a kind of a similar shape. Do more of a pluck. Now here's where things really get fun. When I go into the master section of this instrument, what we see are some controls and some options that we would never have seen in the DX7. Very much a digital concept here, something that's easy to utilize in this instrument. We have both polyphony and we have unison. So I'm just gonna crank polyphony all the way up. I'm gonna turn my output volume down here from the beginning. And what I'd really do is also run this into a limiter to make it very loud. Um, and so I wouldn't have to worry about this so much, but in this case, I haven't done that. You can clearly do that on your own. And then I can start to increase the number of unison voices and I can adjust the detune and the pan position. What's also cool is we have this quality control and you'll hear when I bring in digital, we get some of these upper sort of like grimy partials that come in. I don't think they're necessarily uh, harmonically related. Can I hear that? Or I have analog. You get a little more of that like detune analog sound. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's just go ahead now and increase our voices, increase our detune, increase our pan, and listen to what we're able to create here. I'm 
is going to increase our release even a little bit further. Go into the one that's unlinked. And so we have this really nice kind of classic lead type sound. We can go in and add effects to that as well. Like there's a reverb in here clearly. The point I'm trying to make here is that when you have these modern FM type synthesizers, you don't need to get bogged down in thinking that you have to use it as an FM synth. Here, yeah, we have a little bit of FM going on, but for the most part, this is emulating a subtractive signal flow. We're using a filter. We're basically just combining a bunch of oscillators together, and it gives you some pretty cool and um, interesting sounds. And I kind of like the way the uh, super saw effect sounds in FM8, and I've used it um, a number of times when I didn't feel feel like the analog um, style, like the VA, the dirtier sound was going to really work. So this is a little bit more of, I guess, like a sound design type video, but make sure that you really take advantage of these instruments and you look at them, um, not in terms of what the limits were in the past, but really what the limits are now. And when you have a matrix like this and you have the ability to go in here and choose different waveforms and all of that sort of thing, plus combine that with some of the master effects, you can really take this very far. <laughs> And one final thing to mention is that we can remember, go back in here and change the pan position on some of these. So maybe I'll take this one and put it over like 30. And it's probably gonna be too far, but you get the idea. This will even make it more stereo. Something like that. 